Remember this behemoth of a laptop? Yep, the Dell XPS 15 was once a big, fat but powerful beast. This one is broken though. Let's see whether we can fix it. A bit of backstory first. I was looking for a system for another project and then a friend of mine told me about his old laptop, this XPS 15. Problem is, it was dropped, like literally dropped on the floor and because of that it's not in the perfect working condition. In fact, as soon as you open the laptop you can see that the screen is broken. Half of the screen is unusable. But that does not necessarily make this laptop unusable. What makes it truly unusable is that it shuts down a few minutes after it starts up. Which is a shame because it was top of the line back in 2011 and still pretty powerful even today. It has a hyper-threaded quad-core core i7, an NVIDIA GT 540M, 8GB of RAM, a 1TB hard disk and additional features like a Blu-ray drive, SD card reader, plenty of ports, a nice backlit keyboard and much more. So today, I'm just going to see whether I can make it boot and run properly. If that experiment succeeds, then I'll get a replacement screen and fix that as well. So how do I fix this? Hard disks can often get damaged during drops. But that's not it, because the issues persist even if I boot up an OS from a pen drive. My guess is that it's a thermal issue. The laptop gets quite warm during normal use. And the time it stays on keeps getting shorter if you repeatedly try to switch it on. So why does that happen? CPUs are designed to protect themselves from overheating. When they reach a certain temperature, typically around 100 degrees Celsius, they start throttling so that it doesn't consume as much power and produce as much heat. But if the temperature keeps going up, it has no choice but to shut itself down to prevent damage to itself. So I want to mainly check two things, the thermal paste and the fan connections. Let's open it up and see how it is inside. We will also be disconnecting and reconnecting most of the wires inside so that will help if any got loose during the drop. Let's begin. Disassembling the XPS 15 is a slightly elaborate process but not a difficult one. There are markings all over the body indicating the screw type and the components underneath, which I really miss in modern laptops. The first step is to remove the battery, which is quite simple since it's meant to be removed easily. The bottom panel is held in place by three captive screws and removing it gives access to the RAM and wireless chip along with connectors for the chassis fan and the subwoofer. Yep, this laptop had a dedicated subwoofer built in. We don't see that quite often. Anyway. Let's disconnect the cables and remove the RAM. The screws at the bottom hold various parts together, but we have to disassemble this almost entirely, so let's remove all the screws. I'm keeping track of where the screws came from since it'll be easier when I put it back. Next step is to unclasp the palm rest, flip it over and basically remove the entire frame around the keyboard, but not before disconnecting some cables. To disconnect the touchpad and power button cables, we can simply lift up the connector and slide the cables out. The keyboard is held in place by some clips. It comes out pretty easily, but again, we have to be careful to disconnect the ribbon cables before taking it out completely. There are two separate cables for the keyboard and the backlight, so make sure to remove both. Hmm, now there is this frame that we need to unscrew, but the hard disk and the display assembly sits on top of this frame, so we need to take those out first. For the hard disk, it's just undoing four screws and sliding it out. We have already removed the screws in the bottom that holds the lid in place and there are four more on the top. The lid is free after unscrewing them and disconnecting the cables. Okay, back to the frame. This is held in place by 17 screws and no choice but to unscrew them all. The frame is finally free. The bottom cover just holds the subwoofer and a single fan and the frame is what holds all the major internals of the laptop. You can see the motherboard, RAM slots, heatsink running over the CPU and GPU, and a whole lot more. Yikes, just a single fan for both the CPU and GPU. Not a great thermal design for such a spacious laptop. There's lots of unused space inside, which could have been used more efficiently for thermal dissipation. But then again, the laptop is already fairly heavy, so I guess they had to make a compromise somewhere. You probably have already noticed that the internals are pretty gross and dusty. Uh, look at all this. So gross. Let me clean them up a bit before I replace the thermal paste. Hmm. Uh. 
All righty, time to take off the heat sink. I count seven screws holding this in place. With only two screws across the GPU cold plate? Uh, will that even provide sufficient mounting pressure? I guess Dell knows what they're doing. Off you come. And oh boy, a big chunk of the CPU doesn't seem to have paste on top at all. I'm now almost certain that the shutdowns were because of overheating. Also, this is the hardest thermal paste that I have ever seen. It's a bit of a stretch calling this paste. You can rub your finger all over it and it doesn't budge one bit. Time to replace this crappy paste. I'm using Arctic Silver 5, which I quite like. Maybe I'll replace this with liquid metal after I get everything else working perfectly. Anyway, let's reassemble the whole thing and see whether it works. Okay, moment of truth, fingers crossed, switching on the system. Crap, it's not booting. The display isn't coming on at all. Oh no. What is wrong? Let me do some troubleshooting. Fortunately, that did not take long to fix. I reseated the RAM off camera and it boots now. Yay! Time to do a fresh installation of the OS and see whether it's stable. Let's install Ubuntu on it and also connect an external display. Installation is going on fairly smoothly and I haven't experienced any shutdown so far. Okay, so the installation finished successfully and I've been using the system for over an hour now and it's working fine. Well, not totally fine. There's this horrible noise as soon as the fan spin up. And then it eventually falls into this rhythm. I reopened the laptop to ensure that the fans are screwed in properly and nothing is coming in the way of the blades. And everything seemed fine, so I think the fan is damaged. But at least, the system stays up and is not shutting down by itself anymore. Granted, the CPU is throttling to its lowest possible frequency, but it keeps running. Everything else seems fine. All the hardware is properly detected and I'm calling victory on phase one of this project. It's time to buy replacements for the broken parts. So I need two things to fix the laptop fully. A replacement for the broken screen and a fan. Fortunately, the components are not too expensive. A replacement screen costs about $50 to $60 and the fan is about $10. So I'm going to order them right now and hopefully that'll be all that's required to fix this laptop. Unfortunately, that also means that there's going to be a part two of this video where I'll be replacing the screen and the fan and see whether I can fix this laptop completely. I'm also planning to use the system as a home media server and I'll be making a separate video about that. Stay tuned for all that. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys found it helpful and interesting. Toss a like on it and subscribe for more adventures like this. And thank you for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.